Let me read to you our text for today in the book of Acts, chapter 23, verses 23 to 35. Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for today, devotional. Then he called two of the centurions and said, Get ready 200 soldiers with 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen to go as far as Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. And he wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lysias, to his excellency, the governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them when I came upon them with the soldiers and rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman citizen and desiring to know the charge for which they were accusing him. I brought him down to their council. I found that he was being accused about questions of their law, but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And when it was disclosed to me that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatis. And on the next day, they returned to the barracks, letting the horsemen go on with him. When they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he was from. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. And he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's praetorium. Now here, here is Paul who was heavily guarded and this was the protection of God so that the plot of the Jews will not happen. After hearing the plot, the tribune, whose name is Claudius Lysias, immediately dispatched two centurions to transport or transport Paul to Felix, the governor, who was living at this time at Caesarea Maritima. So each centurion has a hundred soldiers, so they have, were having at least two hundred soldiers. So they left at the third hour of the night. So immediately the tribune did not waste time. He ordered the centurions to live together with 200 soldiers with 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen and mounts for Paul to ride. And the tribune also wrote a letter to Felix the governor, in order to explain and convince him to protect and provide Paul a fair trial because Paul was a Roman citizen. Paul and the Roman guards arrive at Caesarea safely. In verse 34 and 35, we read, on reading the letter, Felix, the governor, asked what province he was from. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, Governor Felix said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive, and he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's praetorium. He was really protected by the governor here from the tribune and all the centurion's army. And with that, we can really see that God has orchestrated everything for Paul to be safe. Well, God allows danger. There is nothing um, very um, mystical or there's nothing that we can really say that the Christians or the believers are protected from danger. God allows danger and we know that it's taught in the Bible. But even though we are living in dangerous situations of life, his presence is assured. As the psalmist has expressed this in Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And this is our assurance that though we are walking in dark places where we are in danger, 
the Lord is with us. His presence will never leave us. As a result, we could have the peace that Paul was talking about in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, that it will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul was safeguarded here because the Lord did not allow that something will happen unto him because his plan, God's plan, is for him to testify for the Lord Jesus in Rome. The psalm is concluded in Psalm 46, verse 10 and 11, and we like these verses. <clears throat> psalm 46, verse 10 and 11 goes this way. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Wow, this is um, an assurance for us that we can be still and take comfort because God is always in control. He will be exalted among the nations and in the earth because the Lord of hosts is not just a few, but hosts is with us. Now, in the Old Testament, we have stories also that God used a lot of unconventional instruments and, and resources in order to guard his people. For example, when Elijah was hiding at the brook Cherith, the ravens came every day to feed him. Another example is Daniel. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, instead of the lions would be feeding on him, the lions were guarding him, that nobody could approach him and, and create him trouble because the lions became his guards. And David, when he fled from Saul, he went to the Philistines, and it was the king Achis who protected him. And these are a few of the examples that we can see in the Bible that God could use ungodly people or unclean instruments to protect his own people. Why? Because God is in control. God is sovereign. We could not fathom God's wisdom. Definitely, his ways and thoughts are higher than, our, uh, than ours. His people, like the church and Israel in the past, they are the apple of his eyes. Thus, Whatever is the plan of the wicked, it won't prosper. For the Lord, the Lord himself determines the limits and the bounds of their plans. Did we not see that in the life of Job? When Satan said, I cannot touch Job. If you are not going to put the heads around him, let me touch him and he will curse you. Why is it that Satan cannot touch Job? It's because the hedge of protection was upon Job. Therefore, no matter how overwhelming our situation is in life today, whatever it is, in your work, in your relationships, in ministries, whatever, are you overwhelmed by your situation right now? It is as if that you are pressed into a corner and you are hopeless, helpless, and you feel that you don't have an option. We should not succumb to discouragement and hopelessness as if we don't have God because God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Paul writing to the Philippians when he was imprisoned in Rome, he said to them in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So what we can learn here from Paul is that his peace comes through safekeeping. Prayer will result to peace in our hearts. Now, there is an, there is an assurance here that peace will be flooded into your hearts, that it will guard your hearts, not to succumb to worries, to fears, and whatever, because God is with us. God will not abandon us. 
He will never leave us nor forsake us. So like Paul, there was a plot that he would be killed. But the Lord saw to it that his plan, his purposes will happen in and through his life. Let's not manipulate things. Let's not play politics in the offices or in our workplaces. Let's commit everything to the Lord in prayer and do just the right thing. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? The work of the devil will not prosper unless the Lord allows it to happen for a reason. But we could always have that comfort in our lives that nothing happened in order to destroy us. But everything is allowed by God because this is part and parcel for the cultivation of the faith and the fortitude that he desires to see in our lives. And this can only happen if we pass through difficulties, if we pass through challenges in life. May it be that we will be able to look our hardships today in this perspective so that we'll enjoy and experience that really God is real. God is here even when we face hardships in life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that this morning, again, we are reminded of how you have orchestrated everything, touching lives, the tribunes, life, the centurions, even Governor Felix, just to secure Paul. And in the same manner, Lord, we can trust you that if we pray, if we commit everything to you, Lord, whatever the situation is, perhaps some of our friends and brethren have difficulties right now and they don't know what to do, but thank you that we can pray and that you will answer our prayers exceedingly. Thank you that when we pray and not worry about anything, you will give us the peace that passes all understanding and you will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you.